welcome everybody to our today's uh, update webinar regarding uh, the Mercedes Benz Stark uh, supplier integration. Um, I hope you can uh, you can hear me well. Um, this is, I think, the fourth webinar of our Stark series uh, where we would like to to update you on uh, the latest changes we have done to the Stark adapter regarding to some um, or is our answer to some changes and enhancement Mercedes Benz has uh, has made to to the Stark portal. Um, so my name is uh, Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing. And with me in this uh, meeting is Christian Middle, uh, responsible for our development. Um, and he will uh, later show us a little bit about the new implemented changes. Before we uh, change to, to Christian, so this will be a very, very short uh, webinar today. Um, if there is, and, and we will, Definitely just um, in the first place talk about the recent changes. If there is anything additionally you want to talk about or see, probably if we can provide you with that information, just let us know in this webinar. Um, I think we also have some um, people in the call which are not already using Argos and Symphony. So if there is anything regarding some Symphony basics or Stark or whatever, just let us know and we can extend the webinar. Uh, very dynamically today. That's not a, not a big problem. Um, so uh, as already indicated, um, we had three uh, improvements, just three, but very important ones, uh, like we believe. So first is now uh, Daimler has uh, given access to master data records, um, which we, of course, then now can also make, uh, make use of. Um, as I said, Christian will, will talk in details about all that. I'm just uh, presenting the high levels here. Um, then um, also there's now, um, again, agreed also with Daimler's kind of a standardized procedure for migration from Dante to Stark for already existing customers uh, of Argos and Symphony, of course. And um, there was one use case where uh, suppliers directly um, create tickets um, and not from the Daimler side in first place. And there are also some, some very good improvements uh, in terms of robustness and, and handling for these kind of tickets here. Um, if you want to uh, raise any, any questions, um, either you can uh, give me a sign, you can raise your hand and then I will unmute you or you can, you can just use the question, question of Raghi panel here in, in the go-to webinar. So we'll make that uh, very dy dynamically today. Um, so yeah, I think that was in the first place um, from, from my side. So I will turn now to Christian so that he can go uh, with you into the details. Just a second. So Christian, now you should be able to present. Yes, I hope you can see my screen. Um, I had a, uh, maybe maybe one comment up front. I had a couple of issues this morning with the integration environment that I'm connected to. So um, so don't blame me if uh, if uh, during the demonstration we lose the connection. Um, I will quickly go for those of you who have not seen Symphony before or are not familiar with our concepts. I will quickly go through. Um, through a standard setup as we would uh, would uh, then also implement it in uh, your environment. Um, what I have prepared in Symfony, we can start from the um, from the installed components. So what we do have is the uh, Stark adapter. Um, the latest version, Ralph already uh, gave an indication of the of the changes. So we have been able now to also gain access to what uh, what Stark calls the master data. It's mainly all around the mapping module, so that that it is it is maximum um, maximum uh, usable when uh, when having to to create the mappings in, in Symfony, so that you can deal with the actual values instead of of identifiers. That's that's what it's all about. 
Um, the second topic was that unlike um, unlike earlier discussions we had um, with the Stark team, it turned out that the procedure of dropping new uh, tickets from the supplier to Stark is kind of an asynchronous um, uh, procedure. Um, uh, Stark team has agreed uh, to to try to fix it, but anyway, we have been changing the um, our our uh, our process template. This is the component that we see here um, to to have like a a synchronizer that is capable of dealing with that uh, asynchronous situation. Anyway, um, I have um, always built the default and the reference project around the combination with Jira, so I have installed a Jira adapter as well. Um, and all of these components are ready built. So first step in an implementation is just you install all of that. Usually, um, usually one of my colleagues um, would of course help you in that. Um, the second step then is to go a little bit deeper into the configuration itself for the adapter. That means we have to create what we call a configuration set. That is pretty much an alias uh, for a connection um, that we want to establish uh, with the Stark system. As I said, mine is called Stark Int um, for the integration environment, and uh, the components are just now um, now uh, Stark has completely moved to a an, an, uh, public endpoint available uh, through the internet. Um, then, very important component: what you need is called the application uh, key. I think the wording is key, so we're going to change that in one of the next adapter versions. Application key in a token, that's the authentication piece, and then uh, the name of the project that you talk to. Um, so these are the basic components, and at any point in time, uh, Symfony is on a regular basis doing what I just show you. It's, it's doing a ping ping, means we do connect um, to the underlying system and uh, basically also usually set up our session involves some data model um, exposure and stuff like that. Um, so I just do it to get a feeling of, of uh, how how stable this, that, that stock system is in the moment. We can already see it's pretty um, it's pretty slow. Um, I will, however, let it go and uh, jump into my into the next pieces of the configuration. So for Jira, pretty much the same setup. You have a configuration set um, that connects us basically to the uh, to the Jira server. And the nice thing in Symfony is that you can have as many connections as you want. So you, the, we are, we do not limit you in, in like the uh, number of systems that you that you synchronize data. Uh, between. So this is pretty default stuff. However, keep in mind uh, to properly uh, prepare your, um, your server and your internet connection. The experience shows that this is one of the critical pieces uh, that the Symfony server itself is really able to talk to the internet. Um, um, cool. Uh, the process template itself is, as I said, is a collection of, um, of, of patterns and, and mechanisms that we have built over over the past 10 years. It's kind of a best practice um, collection. And then the actual process itself, um, again, requires a configuration. This is usually a per project uh, configuration. So in my case, the project is called demo, could be also called body, I think. Um, and what it does, it brings together um, a couple of, of, of additional parameters. So we have to tell uh, which of the Jira systems with what stock uh, to synchronize in case we create a new Jira, what issue type should be created, which project. Um, we still are flexible in terms of giving the actual query to Stark. So this is an actual query string that you can decide. However, down the road, I will, I will make sure we limit that so that you just have a project selection or we just use the project that is already selected through the uh, through configuration and take, then take it away. It's just because we're still like in a in a in a um, in, an, in a phase where we where we are um, enhance the stuff ongoing. Um, Last thing to be done is then the mapping scenario. So this is the actual description of the translation uh, between um, between Stark and um, uh, between Stark and, and, and Jira. So this is actually where we map the, the, the fields and attributes. That is also uh, a very individual piece. So like uh, like installing all the components, getting this stuff set up is is pretty straightforward. 
um, what is then uh, one thing uh, that you would have to go through is uh, in the mapping module the translation of the data I have just here a different kind here's the stark uh, related mappings I was just gonna sh try to show today like what we in intended the scenario type to be so for the different OEMs, you have different folders, if you wish, Stark, um, a default. So um, this is just the name of this mapping scenario, reusable. I can set it up once, and if the projects are quite similar, I can just reuse it. There's also an inheritance mechanism built into the system, so that allows us to have, so I say, a basic mapping that is valid for all the projects and does all the mandatory stuff, and then you can come up with an individual extended mapping per project. So that's the idea here. Yeah. Um, and then I just jump in. I have no, I have a very, very basic project in, in JIRA, so I just have a tiny description. Uh, I think even the description is not mandatory in my case. So, and the way I deal with that is I just then have to, to make sure at least to provide all the, um, all the mandatory attributes from start to Jira and the other way uh, around. And the way I do it, this is kind of the comfort that we have been uh, that, we, that we have been working on a little bit in the latest version. So if I go and say this was, I think, I think what is a good thing that we that we can choose for like any any of the any of the and say the, the, the supply defect category, for example. So we map it down to, let's say, uh, I have nothing, an enumeration field priority. Um, so we say enumeration. So this is basically then the attribute layer. And for those enumeration type attributes, you also have to make sure all the values are translated, if not using the identical values of Stark, which is quite unlikely. And then um, you have on the one hand side, this is what Ralph said, uh, the master data records. So we we would the adopter now gets back into, into Stark and loads all this all this stuff here. So the hardware is uh, is highest. So um, of, of course it's a bit nonsense what I'm doing right now. It's just to, to show you how the module works. Um, great. So um, the mapping, I will just remove this one because it's nonsense, I said. Um, so that's the mapping piece. It this will be like um, um, this will be like uh, like an uh, initial effort to set it up. Um, what we have been working on is uh, is a list of uh, mandatory minimum attributes. So my colleagues from the service team they are ready. If, if starting the pro projects with you, they are ready to share that information with you and show you what is that the, the least minimum you have to send and and, and receive. Um, so uh, to to even be able to speed up that procedure, and then down the road you can adjust it um, as as needed. Uh, the last piece required um, is the scheduler. So this is Symphony scheduling table where we organize when uh, when the synchronizations are are running. Again, it's a similar to the mapping module. We have a folder type of concept. So all the Volkswagen stuff here and then the Daimler stuff here and then for the demo a project I had. And we have built a little editor so that you can easily configure it. I keep I like the concept, but I also kept myself kept forgetting what the what the options and choices are. So we built that little editor. Everything set up. Um, I it's a stock process, that configuration, if you remember that was where we brought together, where we linked together everything which which system talks to which with what mappings and stuff. Um, all of that is set up, and then what I can do here in the demonstration is I try to run it. Let's see how well that goes. Um, so if we uh, run the process, we're going to end up in this um, in this process diagnose. Uh, there's a, I do have an issue with the connection again, and in that process diagnose. Um, we do have um, the process being executed in two phases. The first phase is what we call the scoping. This is where we basically do a query against the start and trying to find out what 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 was changed um, there. The second phase is then the treatment or the synchronization of the individual object. Let me just have a look what is going on. 
Uh, I know it's a misconfiguration that I did. Maybe we get it working. Let me see for a second. Ah, I did not save it properly. Huh? That was no good idea. So we can get it running, maybe. Task. I'll go the mappings. Default. Default. I, this time I'm going to save it. Now let's try it again. Get it to the start. And then we run it. Okay. Let's see if it runs. Do, do, do. Yeah, now it sounds better. So it starts with the scoping, trying to identify the scope. I've not seen, uh, so my, my install is fresh here. So I'm expecting a couple of, of items on the Stark side, if we ever get the connection running. Um, and then it will just process each and every individual um, item and move it into move it into Jira. That's basically, um, that's basically what it does. I'm not sure if it will if it will move. Maybe we give it a couple of more seconds. So that's exactly what I what I'm facing the whole morning. Mm -hmm. It's also pretty slow. So I just leave it running. Um, maybe it's going to pick up at some point, or it's going to time out or anything. Um, so just, that was just basically. Christian. So this means the Stark system at Daimler, so the live testing system, is not available at the moment, right? That's correct. Yeah, I have. I, okay. I I was already thinking of not showing anything, but then I had around ten o'clock. It was quite nice. Um, so I have I have no idea what the guys are doing, but it's again not it's again not moving. Yeah, that's uh, that is true. It's um it's a little bit sometimes uh, not the most stable. Um, but I'm also in talks, uh, so it's uh, by the way the integration environment. So this is also where the Daimler guys uh, on a regular basis apply changes and stuff so that they're available for us. So. Um, yeah, that was basically what I wanted to show um, to show you today how uh, how Symphony uh, works. And uh, I think uh, Ralph, we would be then um, open for 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 the question session, right? Yeah, is there anything else we uh, you want to share with us regarding the second and uh, third point regarding? Um, procedure for migration and uh, ticket reporting from supplier side. Is there any additions from your side? For the, for the migration, um, it's pretty simple because we finally ended up finding a solution that works for both uh, existing and non-existing customers. The only thing that we require is that the Dunde ID, the old Dunde ID is, uh, is available in, uh, in an attribute in the tool that we are connecting to. So that's the only thing we need to, to have. Um, and then the rest of the um, the rest of the um, the rest of the let's say merging the Stark and the Dante world together is done by the process itself. Um, so that is for the that is for the migration. And the third topic, sorry, Ralph, was uh, if the supplier reports an issue to Daimler. Yeah, that we that we already kind of touched. Um, what we did basically is that we uh, that we accepted the fact the creation. Like the, the way it works is that we uh, a new ticket is reported into a different project, and then some mechanism in the background is going to make sure a corresponding ticket in Stark exists in the in the in the true project that we're working with. And we changed the process template now in such a way that we don't expect this to happen immediately. So even that is the final target goal. Um, we can live with what we have today and uh, the mechanism is robust against uh, any delay. Okay, so yeah, then I think we can, uh, we can get back. Into my slides, and then if uh, 
there are now any any questions from your side um, just type them in or maybe raise uh, raise your hand so that i can can unmute you so in the participants panel i think you can raise your hand okay there is one adrian Giochu, so i will unmute mute you so now if you have a microphone you can talk Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. My name is Adrian Chupir from Vitesco Technologies. Um, I could not jump from the beginning. I had a issue with the connection. Um, I have a question because I haven't seen. So in the, what you showed to us was mainly some fields mapping, right? Uh, in, in the configuration to get some data from uh, Stark and to move it to a Jira system. Correct. Yeah, it's a it's a tool. Uh, to, it's on two layers. Um, the first layer is attribute mapping. What we call attribute mm -hmm. mapping. That's just a translation of the attribute names, and then mostly used for the uh, pick list, enumeration, choice type fields. Um, is also uh, we also is uh, need to do what we call a value mapping. So we could, we have to match mm -hmm. the um, the choices unless, for example, you then gonna use uh, simple text fields on your end, of course. I can, okay, I can if, you, if you like, I can no, show you. No, 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 it's, yeah. no, no, it's fine. Uh, thank you, sorry. And the next question, let's say it is possible to do a configuration somewhere um, that to say, okay, uh, if I get this information from the stock, a specific state, I want to uh, generate a state transition in my Jira system from new to, I don't know, accepted, whatever, you know. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is also possible. Yeah, that's also possible for the um, that's also possible for the um, uh, for the configuration. Uh, you can even trigger that through the mapping. So you can just tell uh, the Jira the target status that you want to go uh, go into, and then the adapter will make sure it's going to move um, it's going to move the ticket into the right status. So this is this is the actual configuration, if my understanding is correct. So it's not needed to write exactly. additional code or something. Okay. No, you. no, I know. I yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, there is, um, there is a, there, there is. I mean, I mean, if you, um, um, uh, if you, uh, if you look at, um, at, at uh, let's say the, the roadmap also that we have been going through, um, we are in the process of transitioning away from, uh, from individual implementations to more to standardized solutions. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is. For those that love to code and and are able to, uh, Symfony is also a nice a nice platform to do whatever you want. But uh, the majority of our customers is not so much interested in. Uh, no, no, this is the was my question. This direction that I don't want to develop anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is uh, that's not that's not required. That is what we do for okay. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? Ah, here is uh, Christoph. I just will unmute you. So now you can talk, Christoph. Yeah, hi. Uh, Christoph Mirzwa from Aptiv. Yeah, the question from my side is uh, Did you prepare also some kind of uh, transitions through the status through the Stark? Is there any, any uh, template for that also? Because what what I just uh, see is that you have um, a basic mapping of the creation, yeah, and moving from Stark to to any other direction. In this particular uh, cases, it was with Jira, yeah. True, true. Yeah, we were just looking. We were just looking in the demonstration. We were actually yeah. just looking at the at the one side of the story. Um, the second side of the story, though, where we do uh, move data from the uh, from from tool to Stark, um, this is where we have uh, introduced a fixed status model, just like we did for Dante for our, uh, for our Dante implementation. So you will have um, you will have a fixed model because the the status model in Stark is also pretty pretty simple, I would say, compared to what we've seen in the past. Um, so there's one for the rejection, one for the fix, um, and then one mapping for the other cases, and then um, 
and then you can uh, you can just control when uh, through the query you can control whenever you, you want to trigger what. Okay, okay. Um, and second questions is the, the the regarding the connection with the Stark. Uh, is there any requirements? Uh, for for the for to to get the connection to the stars like like I don't know the, some kind of certifications on on some some et cetera, something like that. So as far as we know, uh, there is there is no real complexity in the very beginning of this year. We still had the had the problem that it was um, that the star uh, server was only available on on the ENX net, network, but um, Daimler has removed that uh, somewhere in March, if I'm if I'm not not or in April, and now it's available publicly on the internet. Um, you would have to uh, make sure uh, then to get in touch with the Starks uh, team to get your application key and token. Mm -hmm. um, past that point, only remaining complexity is that Daimler is using their own root certificates, which is usually not standard uh, delivery of the Java, so we'll uh, we'll have to import that. Um, but we have it we have we have it ready also in the in the support group. So okay. that's that's kind of the, that's kind of pretty pretty simple. Okay. Uh, another question: You recommend that that this uh, Stark is working on, on uh, you know, all the platform. Uh, uh, Symfony should work on, on uh, environments like, like uh, Windows or Linux. What's your recommendation will be here for, for connection with um, the Stark? It's, yeah? it's, it's just like, I mean, the, the general observation I've been make, uh, I've, I have made during the past 10 years is that whenever you have network issues, you have a Windows server. I don't know why that is the case. <laughs> um, uh, the only thing, by the way, I also have seen Windows servers uh, doing it properly. The only thing that you would have to make sure is that the server really can talk to the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, but agreed, there could be some complexity in that. Um, I'm personally the, I'm personally more an expert on the Linux side, so most of the debugging I can help with is is then um, is the stuff that is not available on the Windows side. So, like I, I ask guys, people to do a trace route so that we see where the hops are and where the where the, where the packets got got stuck, and then the answer is uh, this is disabled on my Windows server. So, uh, this is kind of what I can what I can say if you ask me. I hope. Is, that, is that what you wanted to know? <laughs> Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think what Christian wants to say is that there is no general preference from our side in terms of uh, what is best for you. Um, I think where your IT has the best knowledge, I think that should be the system you, you use. Um, I think it doesn't make sense if you have, a let's say, a Microsoft uh, biased IT and recommend them to, now to use Linux. I think it's uh, not a good idea like uh, if you do the same in the other direction. So the, the stuff you are most familiar with from our side, now just to look at looking at, for example, Jira and Stark, there is no preference and I think there is no, no, um, no uh, need uh, for, for any specific operating system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, any other question? Okay, Adrian, again, just give me a second. Now you are unmuted. Yeah, uh, I know that it's not really to the topic, uh, start adapter, uh, and was a discussion of operating system. Uh, have you tried in a, in a cloud, the, the system itself, how it's running in the cloud, like AWS or, yeah, since I mean, I mean, uh, we are actually we have been one of the first Amazon shops in Germany uh, at all, um, with all our infrastructure operated there. Um, and since almost two years, um, we also ship all of our products uh, as Docker containers, as Docker images. 
um, which is kind of the target vision that I personally have, but I learned that maybe uh, this is this uh, a couple of years from now. Uh, and and I think with a Docker you can you can ideally um, you can ideally uh, install everything on a cloud. Um, how much of that we will be offering uh, in, the, in the future, I can't say right now, because very often these song synchronization task is also is also managing sensitive data. So, um, but technically, uh, from technically from an architecture point, uh, uh, yes, of course, run it on an EC on an EC2, put a Docker engine on top of it, and you're you're done. <laughs> no, it, it's okay. Thank you. Okay, let's see any other questions. I think also here not. Yeah, so um, if you should have any questions later, uh, just contact us through our mail at argosense.com email address um, or give us a call, or if you have already a sales or technical counterpart at, at Argosense. Um, just use that channel um, for any additional questions that, that come later on. Um, so I think then we are we are fine for today. Um, I hope we could answer all your questions now accordingly um, and give you the right answers. Um, I'm pretty confident that for all of our customers who have to move, uh, I think at beginning of October, where still the plan is to um, to start officially with uh, with Stark or on the other other side, uh, close the Dante system only or open it only for read only uh, purposes, then we are well prepared in the meantime, we have learned a lot in the last half year where we started uh, started everything with together with the Daimler guys. And um, yeah, we are extremely confident that everything will now run very smoothly also the migrations and everything so yeah let's come to an end thanks again for your participation it was really uh, nice to see so, so many people here in that uh, meeting um, we will sure give you updates um, if, if necessary if there are new uh, important things arise as well as uh, uh, in for our customers which are here in the call uh, we have also uh, new versions of Symfony uh, in the pipeline, and um, as you know, we had usually um, yearly and, bi and, and bi-yearly our Argosense Connect um, conference, where we physically invited everybody here to uh, Convestheim near Stuttgart. This, uh, due to the, all the Corona stuff, we have of course uh, cancelled this year, and we probably will ask. Uh, we will then, in the subsequent years, we will do that remotely, because it's mainly about showing new features, no, no new versions, and we will do such kind of a session for all of our customers and also for prospects uh, for the new versions in, within the next weeks. So, so when we are ready with having presented with. Um, State uh, states for for the software, um, and then we will invite everybody so that we can have sessions for for our products. Uh, go also deep into into technical questions if if necessary. So um, we will inform you via the already known channels, um, newsletter, and, and stuff like that, so that you all have the chance to participate. So thank you for today. Just looking again, no other question. Um, yeah, I wish you all a very nice, uh, nice weekend. Stay, stay safe and healthy, and hope to see or hear you uh, again soon. Bye bye.